How's everybody today? Good. I wonder if we could turn the house lights up just a little bit. Thank you. Maybe a little bit more. We're so glad that you're here today. We're looking forward to a wonderful day. Before we really get started in our service, we want to take just a moment. Today is a day that we set aside to honor our veterans. And uh, Veterans Day is not just to remember those that died in service for our country, but it's also to remember those who served and are even still serving uh, today. We also want to just take this time to, to recognize them, and in just a moment I'm going to have different ones to stand, but before we do that, I, I wanted to, to take just a moment to say something to, or about maybe I should say veterans. If you're a veteran here today, you put on a soldier's uniform, you served your country, did a lot of things that maybe were hard to do, difficult to do, but you did it for a purpose, and that is because everyone that's here today has the freedom to live in a country, to enjoy life the they, way they want to, to go to church when you want to, to live however you choose. You have that freedom because someone fought to keep America free. Amen? As a veteran, we fought not only for you, but we fought for the flag what we call old glory. And every time we see it, our hearts swell with pride because of what it stands for. I remember 1976, a very cold, cold winter morning, 0600, standing as a part of a small group of men as we held the flag and walked out of a certain building out into over a foot of snow in Berlin, Germany, 310 miles inside the Iron Curtain, marched through snow to a flagpole. Stood there, unfolded the flag, hooked it up, and as the bugler, as he began to sound, that beautiful sound that only a bugle can make, watched as Old Glory was hoisted up that flag. I stood there shivering, not because I was standing in snow, but because of the cold chills that I simply had as I watched that flag being raised, and I knew what it stood for. If you've served in any of the armed forces when you see the flag, it stands for more than just a standard of America. The first thing that we notice is that it has 13 stripes. Those 13 stripes stand for the 13 original colonies that broke off because they wanted to be free and to live a life of freedom. The next thing I notice about the flag is there are 50 stars, 50, representing each state that makes up this great nation called the United States of America. And whether you're in the northern part of Alaska or the southern tip of Florida, wherever you may go in these United States of America or around the world as far as that goes, and you're in the presence of that flag, you know that it stands for freedom and that you have the privilege and the right to enjoy your life. Further things I notice about the flag is that of the colors of the flag, the white stands for purity and for virtue. The red stands for hardness and valor. The blue stands for vigilance, perseverance, and justice for all. 
So wherever you may travel, wherever you may go, if you're in the presence of a flag or you see an American flag, you know that somewhere there was somebody that put on a uniform and was willing to go wherever he was told or she was told to go to defend and to fight for the rights to be an American and to live in a country that is free. Therefore, on this day, we pause for just a moment to simply honor the men and women who were patriotic to a place where they stood one day and took a vow that they would defend and fight for, even give their life so that we can experience the freedom that we do today. So, I'm going to ask if you served in the United States Air Force, would you please stand and just remain standing? Is there anyone who served in the Air Force? United States Army. Amen. And just, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hold your applause for just a minute. I want to get through all of this. Air Force, Army, the United States Marines. If you're a Marine, would you stand, please? Marines, United States Navy, would you stand? United States Coast Guard, would you stand? So we've got Air Force in the air, Army and Marines by land, Navy, Coast Guard, through the waters. I think that covers just about every area of our service. These people that are standing here this morning, these men, these ladies, were willing to give of their life for a period of time to make sure you could experience the freedom that you do. Would you stand with me and out of honor? Could we just give them a hand now? And let's thank them for what they've done. Amen. Amen. We're so thankful for the fire department that brought and put up these flags for us today. It's quite an entrance as you come into church today. And I hope that you take time today to thank, to honor our veterans. As Charles Strover, who used to sit about right in there where Vic's at, one of our Marines that have gone on to live in heaven with the Lord, he used to remind us all the time, not only should we give thanks to those who served, but we should thank the spouses of those that stayed home, took care of the home and the family as well. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the privilege that we have to live in a country that is free. In a land where we have the opportunity to live our life the way we choose. And it's because of men and women that were willing to fight and to serve to keep this great country of America free. So today we pause to thank you for their lives, for their sacrifices. And we ask that today, as we honor not only those that have given their lives, but those that are here even today that have served or are still serving, Lord, that you would just wrap your arms around them and bless them and keep them safe and help them to know today how much we appreciate them for all that they've done. In your name we ask it. Amen. Amen.
your hands together with us.
clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break for broken hearts to clear his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He is roaring with power and fighting the battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Every knee will bow. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to say is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Come on, sing it. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting the battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb. Tongue confess that he is Lord. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? See, who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord? No one. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting. Battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the seed of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Restore my 
Amen. Come on, give our healer a big hand today. The great thing is, is no matter what you're facing or going through today, you can be found beautifully complete. And it's only in one way and one way only in Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. We become beautifully complete physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally when we put our lives in his hands today amen Amen. so today lean into him grow in him and let him prove himself faithful to you in every way amen amen Amen. Amen. come on give god a big hand clap this morning amen amen before you're seated greet two people around you you don't know introduce yourself to somebody make them feel welcome today a beautiful noise right there. I wanted to take a quick moment uh, with Pastor Keith here on representing our staff, our pastoral staff, myself, Keith, Mason, Orlando. We want to thank you for your uh, pastor appreciation gift to us last week. We count it a privilege and an honor to get to stand here and do what we do week in and week out through children, through teenagers, and through adults. It is our honor. It is our privilege to serve you And so we thank you for your gifts, and we pray that God will return them to you a hundredfold. God bless you guys. Amen. Yes, thank you. I want to echo that thought as well. You take this time to often send cards, uh, shake our hands, pat us on the back, just say something that means something to us. I was telling first service, one of the cards I got inside one of the gentlemen who made comments, he said, I'm even older than you, but I look up to you as a father figure in our church. 
my wife saw that this morning and laughed at it. She's talking about, she said, I think he's trying to say you're old. And I I said, no. I said, he was honoring me saying that I was spiritual. Isn't that what he meant, don't you think? Yeah. Father figure, see? Is she just trying to get me to feel bad? But anyway, we want to thank you because it does. It means so much to us, uh, all the things that you do, and we appreciate it very, very, very much. Our ushers are coming at this time, and we're going to wait up on you for our Sunday morning tithes and offering, give you an opportunity to give. While they're coming and making their way, uh, I want to do real quickly, if you are 50 years or older, I want you to stand real quick. 50 or older. It was amazing in first service. We were really heavy toward that age. And we got a pretty good group here in this service. Uh, Let's give them a hand. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You can be seated. The reason I wanted you to stand is because we're in the process of starting something. Now, when I said this in first service, people laughed. But it's, it's very important. We are starting a seniors ministry in our church. And uh, we've already, yeah, there you go. We're going to be looking at some different things to do, uh, going on some trips, game nights, activities, different things that we're going to do ever so often. Just get together and fellowship uh, at that age group. So if you're a part of that, be watching. You'll see some sign-ups coming real, real soon, some different announcements. Be a part of that, and I know you're going to enjoy it. We're going to have a great, great time together as well. So remember that's coming real, real soon, and kind of follow up on that. Lord, we love you today. We're so thankful for your goodness and for your mercy. We're thankful for the fact that we've already felt such a wonderful spirit in this place today. So as we pause, Lord, to simply receive this offering, We ask, Lord, that you'd bless today the gift, the giver, and, Lord, that you would take and use what is given so that we can reach more people for you. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you for all that you do, for the opportunity to live in a land that is free. And not only that, Lord, but be able to serve you and to worship the way that we choose. So now, bless this offering, and we ask it in your name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Real quick, before we get into the Word of God, I know we've had a lot going on today. I want to encourage you, if you're a first-timer here or you're new to LC, you've never filled out a guest card in front of you, you can do that. It's in the seat back pocket. Just fill it out. You can leave it at the merch booth, or you can easily just pull out your phone and text new to LC at 555-888. That's easier than filling all that paperwork out. New to LC, 555-888. If you give your life to Jesus today, we want to connect with you. You can type LC Steps to 555-888. That way we can connect with you. You can also get to know all the announcements by just texting Life Church to 555-888. Here's a couple of them. We've got a neat week coming up for you. On Tuesday night, right here at Life Church, 7 o'clock, we're going to have the community Thanksgiving service. We're hosting it. There will be guest speaker, guest music. Let's have a great showing of Life Church here. Would you join me? 7 o'clock is going to be a great night. Also, that evening at 5.30, before that, we'll be packing Nutrition Club bags over at the Nutrition Club. And then Wednesday night. Everybody say Wednesday night. Oh, come on. Everybody say Wednesday night. Now, everybody say, I like to eat. So do I. So make sure you sign up today and bring food out to the expo. We're going to be meeting at 6 o'clock for our Thanksgiving dinner. I got a text from a lady this morning. She said, thank you, Pastor Taryn, for putting this on every year. I have a friend. Her church never gets together for a Thanksgiving dinner. And I thought, well, we do. If you bring it, look at your neighbor and tell them you got to sign up today. Oh, that was about 10 of you. That's awesome. Make sure you sign up. If you don't bring food, you can't eat. So please sign up because we have had people walk in with 15 people and bring a can of corn. That's not going to work. They'll bring a 15-passenger van with a bunch of people we've never met, which that's fine. But then they bring, you know, a package of cheese or something. You're like, okay, well we got to be able to feed everybody. Amen? So make sure you help us out. We need turkeys. We need hams. Make sure they're cut and ready to go. Amen? Amen. 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 A lot of cool things going on. Would you stand on your feet? We're going to do our life confession and get into the Word of God today. It's going to be on the screen. Are you all ready this morning? Well, this section is. How about you all over here? Are you all ready? I know we got a lot of OSU fans over here, and you all are a little... Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I just lost the Holy Spirit, didn't I? 
hey, oh, you can't brag. It was a one point game. Jesus, help us all. Here we go. The life I live is not my own. It is anchored in Christ Jesus who loves me. I choose to accept him whose love accepts me, heals me, and changes me so I can love others. I am alive, and so is God's word. I open my eyes to see, my ears to hear, and my heart to receive. Come on. Today is a good day. This is my life confession. Come on. Give God a big hand clap. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. So we're in a series here called Life Savers. And Life Savers is all about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this series has been a longer series because there are so many fruit we got to get through. Amen. And uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23, it says this, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And today, I get the privilege and honor to talk to us about faithfulness. Everybody say faithfulness. Faithfulness is defined that, and I know you're thinking, I know what faithfulness is, Pastor Taryn, but sometimes the definition gives a little extra push. So let's look at this. Faithfulness is the quality of being loyal. It means to be constant. It's to have allegiance, to be devoted, or to be steady. How many of you know in this day and time, having something that is steady is valuable? Yes. Having something that is consistent is wonderful to have. The opposite of faithfulness would be disloyal. It would be fickle. Have you ever met a fickle person? Ooh. It would be traitorous. I liked that one. Not because I want someone to be a traitor, but I just thought it was a cool definition, cool word. I mean, do you want to use that this week? I think you're being traitorous. <laughs> traitorous. Or untrue. Untrue. That's what the opposite of faithfulness would be. But in order for us to fully understand the faithfulness of God and to understand the quality of that fruit of the Spirit that lies on the inside of us, we have to answer the question of what is faith? The answer to that is found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, what is faith? Faith is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. That's pretty good, wasn't it? How many of you are believing for some things in your life that you can't see yet? Come on, let me see your hand. Well, that's where faith steps in. Because it doesn't take faith to believe for something you've already got. It takes faith to believe for what you do not have that you know God has promised is up ahead and you just don't have it in hand yet. Amen? And so sometimes our faith is growing, our faith is being challenged, our faith is experiencing seasons and ups and downs. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says it's impossible to please God, what? Without faith. So we got to have this faith, we got to let this faith, because anyone who wants to come to him must believe that he exists, and he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Romans 10 17 says, faith comes, How? from listening to the good news, the good news about Christ. What is the good news? The good news is that God loved the world, that's you and I, so much that he sent his son, his one and only son, to die on a cross so that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Jesus Christ came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He lived for 33 years. At 33 years, he was crucified on a cross. He was laid in a tomb. And three days later, Scripture tells us he was resurrected from the dead. He appeared to his disciples for a period of time, and then he ascended to the Father. He ascended to the Father so that the promise of the Holy Spirit could be sent to believers everywhere. And the promise was sent after his ascension on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church. The church was born. And that that same church is the church we see across this room joining us online today. It is the church of the living God, and we are full of the Holy Spirit. And if we are full of the Holy Spirit, we are full of the fruits of the Spirit, which means you and I can now learn how to be faithful people. Yes. Amen? We can be faithful in every area of our life. We can know him and we can experience his faithfulness. Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ is eternally changeless, always the same, yesterday, today, and forever. How many of you know God is faithful? 
He is loyal forever. He is constant and true and devoted. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. We're talking about faithfulness here. Let's look at this one. I love this scripture right here. It says, here's a trustworthy saying. It says, if we died with him, we will also live with him. Let's pause right there. That means if you and I pass away from this earthly life and we, we, our bodies cease to exist, we will immediately be with Jesus, our soul will. So when you take your last breath here, your next breath is taken in heaven with him. You're standing before your Savior, your Creator. We all will spend an eternity somewhere. There are two locations. It is heaven and it is hell. We get to choose while we're here on earth. God is not a dictator that makes you choose heaven, but I would encourage you to choose heaven. Amen? Amen? I would encourage you to choose life. Because when you choose life, you choose an eternity free and separated from condemnation, separated from sickness and pain, separated from everything that is wrong, and put in an eternity that is right. So if we die with him while we're on this earth, we actually now get to live with him. It goes on to say if we endure, we also reign with him. Now how many know you're not going to have to endure when you get to heaven? Heaven won't require any endurance. Well, I mean, we get to walk on the streets of gold. If you like to fish, you get to fish the river of life. I mean, if you, if you want to go up and talk to Moses and find out what it was like when they walked through the Red Sea on dry ground, you can go and sit down with Moses and say, yo, Moses, what's up? Tell me about it. And he'll say, well, it was like this. I mean, think about all the things you could do in heaven. There won't be any endurance. It'll just be wonderful. It'll be a blessing. It'll be, it'll be everything you have ever dreamed heaven could be and more. Amen? So it says, if we endure with him, meaning endure the fight, endure the struggle, endure the things you deal with on this earth, because this earth requires endurance. Relationships require endurance. Uh, uh, jobs requ require endurance. There are struggles in this life. We've got to endure. We've got to get up one more time. When you fail, it doesn't mean you've messed up so bad that God hates you. You just get back up and say, God, I'm going to do better this time. Let's go. And God said, I'm ready. Let's roll. Amen? Because that's what God does. He wants you to live for him. He wants you to grow in him. He wants you to endure with him. Now look at the next line, though. It says, if we disown him, he will also disown us. Now that's pretty powerful, isn't it? Because it's not that God wants to get rid of us, but God can't make us stay in relationship with him. Just like God cannot make us or force us to serve him and accept him, God cannot make us and force us to live for him and stay with him. Just as we choose to accept him as our savior, we can choose to say, I don't want you in my life anymore and walk away from him. Notice who walked away though, us. God doesn't change. He won't walk away. And if on your journey you are away from God and you have said in your life, I don't want to live for you anymore, and you're making decisions that are opposing everything Scripture says, everything the Word says, everything you know is right, and you find yourself on this journey in need of God, and you think to yourself, I have messed up my life royally, and I need to get back to God, if you'll just say, God, I need you in my life, he's right there and ready to pick up and start over. Amen? Amen. Let's carry on. Look at this scripture. This scripture's got so much good stuff in it. It says, if we are faithless, he remains what? Oh, that's good. Because how many of you know, sometimes as Christians, our faith can be shaken. We can misunderstand why things have happened to us the way they've happened. Why we are going through these challenges. Why the struggle is real. Why the mountain's so tall. We can go through some things in our life that we don't understand. And we can question God at times. God, where are you? God, why did you allow this to happen? God, what's going on here? But when our faith becomes less, he remains faithful. And he sees it as an opportunity to just teach us and help us to grow. And if we'll endure through that thing that's testing our faith, we'll come out on the other side of it with our faith having grown to a new level because God will always make sure everything you face in this life helps you grow in your faith. It may be awful, it may be a challenge, but you're gonna come out of it better. Amen? So don't get mad at yourself or think God's mad at you if your faith is shaken by something. He is faithful. He cannot disown himself. And then it says, keep on reminding God's people of these things. I want to remind you today, God is faithful. Mountaintop experience is faithful. Valley low experience is faithful. 
God is faithful when everything is going your way and when everything's falling apart. God is faithful when you are physically well and God is faithful when your body is sick. God is faithful when your marriage is good and hot and passionate and God is faithful when you're thinking, who in the world am I married to? God is faithful when you are single and you're waiting for that person to come along. God is faithful when that newborn baby has been passed into your arms and you're thinking, I don't know how to raise this baby. And then you find out you don't know how to raise them pretty well all the days of their life. God is faithful, amen? God is faithful when you got a mortgage and you got to pay your bills. God is faithful when you need a job. God is faithful when you don't have the answers. God is faithful and he will always be faithful, amen? So I want to remind you of that God is faithful. And because he is faithful, and because he is on the inside of us, we can be faithful. Amen? If the faithful one is in me, and his fruit of faithfulness is in me, I now can be faithful in every area of my life. I can learn how to live out faithfulness every part of my life. There are three main areas I want to share with you. I know there are many areas that we need to be faithful in, but I kind of think there are a lot of areas connected to these three areas. So we're going to dive into them. Are you all ready? If you're taking notes, I see all those pens and papers out there. Uh, We'll write these down or put them in your phone. Number one, we need to be faithful to spiritual growth. Be faithful to spiritual growth. God wants you to grow spiritually. When my babies were infants and newborns, we didn't just give them one bottle at bedtime, throw them in their crib, and get up the next day at 10 and then have slept through the night. Somewhere between that 1 and 3 o'clock in the morning hour, they woke up hungry. And we would flip a coin on who was going to get the bottle. And we would go get the bottle, and we would feed them. And after we fed them, they would lay back down, and they would sleep through the rest of the night. Then we realized, as they were getting older, because they wanted more food, and they wanted more bottles, it was time to put this wonderful, God-giving blessing from heaven called cereal into the bottle. Because when, yeah, and all those parents that did that, you say, amen. So we would put a scoop of cereal in it. We'd shake that stuff up, and then they would just sleep a little bit later. And as they kept growing, it required more and more cereal. I mean, by the time my kids were about to be off the bottle, it was so thick, it was like pancake batter. (laughs) We had to cut that top up and make it just a big, gigantic hole, and they would sit there and, and I'm like, yeah, come on, get every drop, baby. You're sleeping all night long. And when that didn't work, Benadryl was always a good friend. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Not really, but sort of. Um, What's your point, Taryn? Well, I do have a point. (laughs) Spiritually speaking, it is the same. You don't just experience God in an amazing service, feel his touch, get saved, and that's it. Your your spirit on the inside craves more food than just one time a week. And for some of us, one time a month. Woo, quiet right there. God wants you to feed your spirit, man, every day. You leave this place today, you're going to lunch, aren't you? And after lunch tonight, you'll probably have some dinner because you're going to be hungry again. And tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're going to want some breakfast. And about noon, your body's going to say, it's time to eat. My body knows when the bombs start going off at 11, lunch is coming. <laughs> And so, I eat some lunch. Somewhere around 3 o'clock, my body says, you want a snack. In fact, it usually says, you want a sugary snack. I know it's a problem. Pray for me. And then we have dinner. And dinner is so good. Why? Because we feed ourselves. Because our body says you're physically hungry. Did you know your spirit man is just as hungry as your physical man? It wants food just like your stomach craves food. And that spiritual food comes from the word of God and comes through prayer. you got to read the Bible. You have got to pray if you're going to grow spiritually. If you're just doing that on Sunday mornings at church and you're not eating the rest of the week, you are suffering spiritually. Look at this. The scripture tells us about the Bible, how good it is. Look at this right here. 
In Hebrews 4 verse 12, it says, The word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. That's why you need to read. It'll help you know what is right and what is wrong in your life. How do you know that, Taryn? The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 16, All scripture is inspired by God, is useful to teach us what is true, and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong. And it teaches us to do what is right. Daily, you need to read the Bible. Well, pastor, I don't understand the Bible I have. If you are reading grandpa's King James Version and it doesn't make sense to you, do not be under condemnation or legalism. Go get a translation you can understand. I encourage our steps class to get an NIV or an NLT, the New International Version, the New Living Translation. Both are great translations that help you understand what those words mean, and it can get into your system and it can feed you. Everybody in this house that has a cell phone, you need the Bible app. You can download that Bible app. You can read the Bible every day on it. You can read a devotional every day on it. And even what's great about that, if you don't have time to read it at home yourself, you can put it in your car, press play, and someone pre-recorded it and will read it to you. I mean, it's basically impossible to avoid the word of God today. Open it up and get it in your life. Amen? Well, pastor, I don't know where to start. Well, don't start in the book of Numbers. Don't start in Leviticus. You won't read past chapter 2. Start in Psalms. Start in Proverbs. New Testament, start in the book of John. The book of John is a wonderful gospel to start in. If you'll read one Psalm, one Proverb every day, you will start growing spiritually. Amen? Amen? The second way you're going to grow spiritually and be faithful to your spiritual life is through prayer. you got to talk to God. And prayer, we got to get beyond the formality that we think prayer is some huge formal thing. Prayer is talking to God. And if you'll begin to talk to him just like you talk to your best friend, I'm here to tell you, you'll start communicating with God and he'll communicate back to you. Well, pastor, you don't know how I talk to my best friend. <laughs> well, that's where scripture will start convicting you of what's wrong in your life. Y'all with me this morning? Why is it important to pray? James 5.16 says the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces. Everybody say produces. Wonderful results. When you pray, something's going to happen. Amen? So start praying every day. You can pray on your way to work while you're driving your car. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that you are going to give me faith. You're going to give me wisdom on how to work this job I'm going to. You're going to help me parent these children you've given me. You're going to help me make the decisions I need to make. Lord, we're facing this challenge today. Would you help us overcome this challenge? If you're struggling with the temptation, God, this temptation is driving me nuts. Would you help me overcome this thing as it comes up? If you're trusting God for an answer, ask him for the answer. If you're trusting God to get you through a dry season, ask him for a refreshment. If you're dealing with depression, ask for joy unspeakable and full of glory. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. It's time for us to start asking God and the one who is faithful will send to you the thing you need in your life. Amen. Amen. So you got to read the word, you got to pray. We got to be faithful to spiritual growth. Number two, be faithful to my church. Now some of you right now just said, well, shouldn't that be a part of the spiritual growth when Pastor Darren why is the church in there with reading the Bible and praying? Well, here's why. Church does help you grow spiritually. I agree. But church should never be your only source of spiritual growth. Church was not created to be the answer for all your spiritual growth. Church was meant to be where we all have brought our week's experiences, our growths, our challenges, our spiritual growth, where we've struggled. We come into this place corporately, all together as believers, and we begin to lift up the name of Jesus. And when we lift up the name of Jesus, his presence enters the room. And when his presence enters the room, it takes our weekly spiritual growth and pushes it to the next level. Amen. Something happens when we come to church. It's good to come to church. Amen. I know y'all are looking at me like, uh, we're here, duh. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, when you're faithful to church, you're going to get something out of church. Amen. And not just by attending, by coming and expecting something. Amen. When you walk into this room going, something's going to happen good today, I just know it. 
I'm here to tell you, you'll leave saying, I knew it. Look what happened. When you come into this place expecting God to do something for you, he will do something for you. Faithfulness to corporate worship is key to our spiritual existence and experience. I mean, this past Wednesday, we had an amazing time gathering together in this room. If you miss first Wednesdays, you miss worship at a next level experience. It's amazing. You got to come because it's powerful. Look what scripture says to us. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. It says, let us not neglect our church meetings as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. God wants us to gather in church. He wants us to. It's something he desired. You can read where Jesus, he went to church when he was on this earth. John 4, 24, Jesus taught God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Do not come in here and just sing the songs. Worship God as you're le- reading those words, as you're singing out, whether you can sing in tune or not, it doesn't matter. But as you do it, put your mind on Christ and begin to see him. And when you see him, we're worshiping him in spirit because where two or three are gathered in his name, his spirit is there. So we're in the spirit right Right now his spirit is here Amen. you can't get away from that his spirit is here and the truth is wrapped up in these words and when we begin to declare the truth out of these words and song what we're doing is we're worshiping in spirit and in truth and when the spirit and the truth come into contact with your soul that's when you go to a new level and you find yourself a tear sometime rolling down your cheek you don't even know why you're crying you find yourself with a goose bump on your arm you find yourself lifting those hands up to heaven. why are my hands going up I'm not really sure what's going on it's because you're lifting up the name of Jesus the one who saved your soul the one who paid the price the one who helped you get through another week amen when we clap our hands we're not just clapping because we got a cool beat around here we're clapping because when we clap our hands it ticks Satan off it messes up his rhythm of disrespect it messes up his rhythm of of a distraction in your life so I clap my hands really loud when I'm on the front row because I'm like I'm sick of his distractions Amen? There's a reason why we do this. It's not just to play church. It's to experience the fullness of what God has. Look what Psalms 92 says. Psalms 92 verse 13, it says, planted. Everybody say planted. Planted Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish. It did not say bouncing from house to house in the Lord, they will flourish. Ooh, Jesus. Church hopping is like taking your favorite plant out of its pot in August in Oklahoma, setting it out on the sidewalk and expecting it to flourish and grow. What you have done is you have pulled it out of the protection that it had to hold in the nutrients, to hold in the water, to feed it when it's hungry, to help it to grow and to flourish. And now you've set it out, out from under the cover of a solid church home. And now it's getting the elements of the heat, the elements of things attacking it, and it cannot thrive and it cannot survive. But when you remain planted, that's when you can grow and when you can thrive and when you can survive. I met a lady out here at our Halloween event just a few weeks ago. She came up to me, she goes, you got just got such an amazing church. But she said, God has just called me to just go here and there. And I just looked at her and I wanted to say, no, he has not. Quit saying that. Because the word says planted. It did not say hop, skip, and jump through churches. Now, I know there's a season and there's a time where you got to try out churches and you got to find what church fits you. But when you find the church that fits you, when you remain faithful to it, your roots are going to get established and they're going to grow and they're going to flourish like never before. You can't jerk those roots up and then put them over here in this church and expect them not to be in shock. When you repot a plant, it goes into shock. It experiences some shock. It doesn't mean you won't get something good from that church. You will. It's just different than what the roots were used to. So now your roots are in shock. And then a lot of people after a month, because it's not like what they were used to, they jerk up out of that one or they try another one. And their spirit man's going, what are you doing to me? I'm going crazy. God wants you to find a church and remain. A lot of times when I preach this, people will leave church. I'm not preaching this for you to leave the church. I'm preaching this to say, stay in the church. Remain committed. Amen. Amen. (laughs) 
Somebody told me after first service, you made people mad. They got up and left. I'm like, ah, I'm glad pastor appreciation was last week. <laughs> Galatians 5.13 says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Everybody say, be free. That means be free. And then look at this. But do not use your freedom, look at this next line, to indulge the flesh. Now, I've read that so many times and stopped right there and thought it meant sin, which I think he doesn't want us to use our freedom to indulge the flesh of sin and all those things too. But look at this next thing, semicolon, rather, comma, serve one another humbly in love. You are called to be free but don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh rather than serve one another in love. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the most common indulgences of the flesh isn't exactly the first one that may have popped into your mind. One of the most common found in most churches is spiritually lethargic sin. When we become lazy Christians, We come to church, we go through the motions, we are here, but we're not doing anything about what we're here for. We get lazy. We, laziness becomes common among Christians a lot. Let me point this out. You don't have to say amen, you don't have to raise your hand, you don't have to stand. But this is, if this is you, you know this is an area you need to work on. If you've attended Life Church for six months or more, this is your church home. You attend here, you support it financially with your tithe, but you're still not serving in this church, you've not found a place to serve, then I'm here to tell you, you're indulging your flesh. Your flesh that says, I've worked hard this week, I don't have time to serve at church. I'm too busy, Pastor Terrence. I don't have time to get involved in the church and worry about someone who could be lost that may be finding their way to Christ. And if I did what God called me to do, it might have opened up the avenue for that person to find Christ. I'm too busy. Ooh, it's quiet up in here. Did you know about 20% of a church that makes up about 1,000 people? So 200 people every week make this church run and operate while 800 bask in what the 200 do. What if that flipped? What if 800 people began to serve every single month in one capacity or another, while the 200 were still just getting their lives right with God, realizing this is their church home and finding their area that they could serve? Do you know what would happen? We would never, ever have to get up here and say, oh, we need some help in the nursery. Would someone please help us change peepee diapers? Oh, we need some help in the classrooms. Would someone please help us teach a class? Oh, we need some help in the greeters. Would someone please come shake hands and make people feel welcome? We sure could use some help at the cafe. Would someone help us make that wonderful coffee everybody enjoys for free? We sure could use some help over in the merch booth. Would someone help us there? We sure could use some help in that youth department. Teenagers? No. I mean, yeah, we got all these people that could help us do so many things. We would never ever have to ask you because if everyone would serve, you would only have to serve once every two months and we would never ever have to beg someone to serve more than one time and everybody could enjoy the goodness of God in the church. So, what is it you need to be doing to be faithful to your church? Look at your neighbor and tell him, I know he's talking to you. I knew it. I knew it was you. (laughs) So we need to be faithful, number one, to spiritual growth. Number two, be faithful to the house, to our church house. Number three, we need to be faithful to to our community. I need to be faithful to my community. What is my community? Community is defined as a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. Under the roof of the house that I live in, that group of people is Shanista, Gabby, and Zion, and myself. We have a lot in common. We have some things not in common. But it's one community. We are a family unit. If I'm not practicing the fruit of faithfulness in my house, it is going to have long lasting ramifications upon my family. If I'm not faithful 
It's going to mess my wife up. It's going to mess my children up. Because I have to be faithful. Are you all with me this morning? Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, This day I call heaven and earth as a witness against you, that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life. Everybody say, choose life. life. That you and your children may live. Your choices are having an effect upon your children. Parents, be faithful. Be faithful to each other. Be faithful to your children. Be faithful. You you, you are not going to be successful in your job if you're not faithful. You're not going to be successful in anything if you're not faithful to it. That means showing up when you want to and showing up when you don't feel like it. You've got to be faithful. Marriage is not a long-lasting honeymoon. You've got to be faithful. If you're single and you're wanting to marry one day, you need to be faithful to the idea of the community you want to establish. If the person you're dating does not fit the idea, the plan, the vision you had for the community you want to establish, you need to kick them to the curb and make room for the one God is preparing that does fit what you've wanted. Because you can't change them. You can't make them fit. It won't work. I promise you. Quit trying to make someone fit into something they can't fit into. Wait for the one that's meant to fit there and it'll work. It's community. You're meant to have it and you gotta be faithful to it. Right here in our church, the Life Church Singles, they have community together. They celebrate life together. They go through ups and downs together. They go to the movies together. They go to to concerts together. They're having a blast. They're growing spiritually. They're growing in relationships together. It's community. There's community in the church. Well, pastor, I don't know anybody in the church. Well, you want to know how you get to know somebody in the church? Hi, I'm Taryn. How are you? What's your name? You got to put yourself out there. You're going to get out of this church, what you put into this church. Don't sit back and expect everybody to bombard you with friendship when you got a wall up not speaking to anybody. Y'all hating on preacher today? Whew, just a little bit. Okay, good. Well, I'm about to lose my voice, so pray harder. You gotta have that vision for it, amen? We as a church, we started a movement called I Love My City. This past Wednesday night, Life Church donated 300, nearly 300 brand new winter coats to a bunch of kids that we may never meet that do not have a winter coat when it starts getting cold around here. That is loving the community. That is being faithful to the community. Your community is your home. Your community is your workplace. Your community is right here in your church. Galatians 6, 7 says, people harvest what they plant. You're gonna get back what you give out. If you want faithfulness in your life, you need to be faithful. Well, pastor, my spouse hasn't been faithful. You remain faithful. Because of your faithfulness, it'll win them over to faithfulness. Well, pastor, I don't see my my coworkers being faithful to the job like me and they get the promotion. You know what? God sees it. It is God who promotes. You trust God. He'll lead you to that position when it's the right time. You remain faithful. (laughs) Faithfulness can be practiced because we know that God of faithfulness. Amen? Amen. Shanisha, come here. We'll put you on a spot. I usually get in trouble when I do this. But I'm not going to have her speak, so I'm not going to be in trouble. Since my throat is a little bit jacked, I had a song that I was going to sing at the close of my message. I want you to do it really quick. Would you do it? You need a microphone. There's an old song that I sang at the end of first service, and I can't do it now because I sound like it. But this is how you and I can know what faithfulness is and experience it and do it daily. Go ahead. The words are right there if you don't remember. I just don't know where to start. Huh? It's great is thy faithfulness. Yeah. Great is thy faithfulness. He is. Great is thy faithfulness, Mm -hmm. morning by morning, new mercies I 
See that? Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. So that's how you and I will be faithful in every area of our lives is because we know the one who has been faithful to us. Amen. Every head is up, every eye is looking around. If you need God's faithful touch in your area of your life, you need him to minister to you in some way, shape, or form. You need faithfulness in your home. Maybe you need to do better at being faithful to your home. Maybe you need to be better at being faithful in your church. Maybe you need to be better at being faithful in the community that you have. Faithful in your prayer time. Faithful to reading the scripture. Whatever it may be, there may be a need for faithfulness in your life or you may also need God to touch you with his faithfulness and remind you that he's there. If that's you, I just simply want you to stand. Come on, just stand. Just stand. You're not going to be alone. Come on, just stand. God bless you. Come on, you need God to touch you with his faithfulness. You need him to minister to your body physically. You need him to touch your home, your family, your marriage, your job, your finances. You need God to do something that just proves his faithfulness. Come on. Come on, stand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, if someone is standing around you, Life Church, I want you to go and be the community of God to them. Come on, go put a hand on their shoulder. Come on, nobody's standing alone. Everybody has somebody around them. You don't have to know their need. All that matters is that you care. God knows the need, amen? The rest of you can stand. We're going to pray and we're going to go right into worship and then we'll be dismissed. This service has gone a little longer than normal. We've had some extra things. That's okay. The buffet will still be warm. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. And we thank you for the privilege and honor we have to call upon a faithful God. To know your faithfulness in our lives. To know that you are faithful in every way, shape, or form. That you're faithful when we're faithless. God, you see people in this room that are struggling in their faith. Encourage them today. Build their faith up. Lord, there are those that have walked away from faith. Lord, may they right now say, Jesus, I surrender my life back to you. I lean into you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with everything. Lord, there are those that need a physical touch. Healing flow from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. God, heal relationships and marriages and homes in this room. God, break off addictions and struggles to weakness. God, begin to provide by joy over depression, joy to just flood their lives today. God, I pray for that. I pray if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that doesn't know you, then simply right now just say, Jesus, come into my heart and be my Savior. I surrender my life to you. Father, I thank you for this community of believers. I thank you that even though we may not all know each other by name, What we do have in common is the name of Jesus that covers our lives. We lean into you today. We lean into you today. You're so faithful. Come on, just begin to thank him for his faithfulness today. Come on, begin to thank him for it. He's good. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. It is well.
through it all. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, come on, through it all, it is well. Because he's faithful. Through it all, my eyes are on you and your faithfulness. And because of your faithfulness, it is well with me. Amen. 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 Come on, give God a big hand clap this morning. Remember, because of his faithfulness, you can be faithful. Amen. 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 Don't forget, if you have not signed up for our dinner, that is this Wednesday, 6 o'clock at the Expo. It's out there under the Lifesavers. Uh, what? Yes. Okay, the dinner is Wednesday, 6 o'clock at the Expo. Sign up over there in the lobby Tuesday night, right here, 7 o'clock. We're going to be here for a community service. I hope you'll join us. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>